another feeling getting started with 3d there just seems to be so many programs out there and if you don't know what to learn in this video i'm going to break down the most common 3d applications so let's start with 3ds Max. I haven't used this a lot, so I can be quite quick about it. The good thing is it's used for ArcVis a lot. So if you're in that industry, I think it might be a good pick. I know the viewport can handle tons and tons and tons of geometry. The downsides are 3D motion industry. I don't know anyone who uses it. I know one person, I think. And there's no Mac support. So if you're running Mac, you're out of the game. The second one I want to break down is Maya because I use it very briefly in uni. The good thing is many VFX companies use Maya and I've heard it has great character tools. The bad thing is uh, it's very expensive. All right, now to the fun stuff. <laughs> These programs I actually know a lot more about. First one, Cinema 4D. The good thing is Cinema 4D is really easy to learn. It's really, really easy. And it has some great animation tools, some great procedural tools. They call it MoGraph. Um, there's many, many, many tutorials online from Cinema 4D. School of Motion has great courses. They take you from a beginner to someone who can actually take on jobs. Another really good thing about Cinema 4D is that it's industry standard. So if you're planning on working as a freelancer in the industry, it's a great bet, like 90% of the companies I know in London work with Cinema 4D. The last thing is, it's great with sketching too. And there's some great tutorials from E.G. Hassan Fratz. All right, let's talk about Houdini. Houdini is the application I work with most. I love it. The great thing about Houdini is it's fully procedural. I would say like 99% procedural, but basically what that means is you can change anything at any point. I think the great thing about Houdini as well is that it teaches you to think in a logical way. Houdini works in a node-based way, which means you're kind of visually programming things. I think after this, if you want to pick up other applications, you, you get your way of thinking around 3D really, really clear. And I think that is something that people don't talk about a lot, but it's really, really important. Another benefit is that really high-end studios are starting to use it now. So studios like Memphis Machine, I think Future Deluxe, Panoply, like if you want to get into those studios, you should definitely go for Houdini. It's used in the VFX industry a lot as well, because the thing is, it works amazing with fluids, particles, destructions. It's really, really good for any kind of like visual effect typey thing. Houdini is incredibly strong as well. You can have so many copies of things. You can have so much geometry and particles in the viewport and it just runs so smoothly. The only downside about Houdini is the learning curve. Everyone talks about the learning curve. It's not easy, but I made a course to make it really easy. So if you want to learn it, then there's a link in the description. So one benefit and a downside is that if you don't earn a lot of money, Houdini is actually really affordable. I think it's around $250 a year. If you earn a lot, it's actually quite expensive, like a couple of thousand. But if you earn a lot, then I think it's quite fair if you gain so much value from their tools. So yeah, that's Houdini. Now let's get into the last one, Blender. So Blender is the last tool I've learned and it's actually amazing. I think it's a great companion to Houdini as well. It's perfect for destructive workflows if you want to sculpt, if you want to model. Texture painting works really, really well and it's free. <laughs> it's free. You know, we pay thousands of dollars for certain 3D applications and Blender is free. It's free because it's open source. The benefit of open source is that the development of Blender is rapid. It's crazy, they release one update after another with really, really, really good features. The other thing is it has an inbuilt GPU real-time renderer, uh, it's called EV, and you can switch quite easily between Cycles, which is their more high-end render, and their GPU render, which is more like a game engine kind of render. So, you know, if you want to send a quick preview over to a client, but you don't have time to render out the whole thing, you could just do a GPU real-time render and you know, that's like 80% there. It's better than a viewport render. And in general, it just works very fun. It's very like hands-on. You just grab points and vertices, form them. It's really, really fun. 
some of the downsides. The first is navigation. Navigation is quite weird and it came a long way already. I think back in the day you had to right mouse click to select things and it was just all really really weird. But these days it's a lot better and they even have an industry standard navigation mode. If you're picking up Blender from Houdini then Antecma made a great tutorial how you can remap your keys so they're like Houdini. And another downside is not that many people use it yet in the 3D motion industry. So just in case you want to start out in the industry and you want to pick up a job in a year or something, then maybe it's not the best tool. So yeah, that's just the five main 3D applications. Uh, I hope this was useful. If you want to know more about Blender, I made a video. You can watch it here somewhere. I'd love to see you in the next video. Bye!